Welcome back to the Trading Cryptocurrency with Python series. In this video, I want to sort of come wrap up a few things, touch on a few things that people have commented, and sort of come to a nice conclusion for the series for now. Um, I do plan to come back to this sometime in the future. There were some interesting things people commented that I'd like to talk about and, and dig further into. But kind of the main thing I wanted to talk about in this video is why you can't get rich quick by finding a trading algorithm online. Um, and I think this is something that maybe should be obvious, but if you don't really consider it, um, maybe isn't so obvious to, to everybody. So ultimately, when you are looking, maybe you're searching through YouTube videos, it's how you found this series, or you're finding an article online that tells you how to trade, um, build an automated trading bot for cryptocurrency or anything else, really. Um, and you're looking for a way, you're looking for code that somebody's posted online that you can run that will make you money. Right. Everybody is you know, finding these videos because ultimately they want to trade cryptocurrency and make money. Um, so I want to explain today why you cannot just pull somebody else's code, run it, and make profits of your own. Um, and the main reason for this is because there's this uniqueness property of a trading algorithm that you need to be the only one or one of the only ones running it in order for it to work. And so to explain this a bit further, I have the, the Binance Exchange Binance US specifically, the exchange up here. And we're going to take a look at the order book so you can see all of the buys and sells that are coming in on the exchange right now. Um, so another thing, I, I did touch on this a bit in one of the previous videos. A thing you need to remember when you're trading on an exchange is these are you know, real people offering their, their sell orders or their buy orders up for you to fulfill. Um, this is not that it's not the case that you can always buy and sell at the price listed this price here that you're seeing that's fluctuating over time is calculated from the buys and sells of what people are offering on the exchange and this is just constantly iterating over time so for example um, let's actually take a look at a smaller cryptocurrency to um, really illustrate this point so let's say I'm going to take a, a quick screenshot of this we can get one step in time so it's not constantly changing here So let's say, for example, you want to buy basic attention token, or BAT, at 1.35, let's say. So these are all of the sell orders on the exchange right now that are available for you to purchase BAT at that price. Right? If it's lower, then obviously you can buy it at that price. They'll sell it to you for that price if they're offering lower. Um, but you can't, you can't, just because the price is below that, doesn't mean you can actually buy it there okay and so this is the amount of BAT offered by these five people at this point in time on the exchange so you can see there's about uh, I'd say fifteen thousand dollars offered maybe a little bit less of offered on the exchange at this point in time um, and so the reason that you need a unique algorithm of your own is because if I were to for example post a video to my viewers showing an algorithm that works you know you can you can run this algorithm and it works all the time everybody will make money um, I get about you know on the order of hundreds of viewers here but you can imagine how this would even amplify with a larger channel um, but anyway let's say 10 of you watching this video decide to run an algorithm that that I created or posted on, on the video and it said the algorithm gave you a buy signal at 1.135 Let's say each of you were trading $5,000, um, which actually is really not that much in, in terms of these high frequency trading algorithms, um, just because you know, you're looking at gains or losses of like fractions of a percent for each trade. So you know, 1% on $5,000 is only 50 bucks. You're looking at maybe $10, um, for five, $10 up or down on a trade of $5,000 realistically. So 10 of you, you're each trading $5,000 on the exchange, and you all are trying to fill at 1.135. Well, there's only $15,000 offered, right? So all 10 of you are not gonna get your buy. If you have limit buys, your orders aren't gonna fill. If you have market buys, you're gonna get a price that you weren't expecting. You're gonna get a worse price um, because you know these are gonna be gone, the price is gonna go up, and you're gonna get one of these higher, one of these higher offers out there. 
Um, so this is really the, the concept that you need to understand to, to know why you cannot just pull somebody else's code and all trade at the same time, the same algorithm, and all make money. Um, you know, if I could post a strategy where thousands of people could all run it at the same time and everybody makes money, that'd be great. You know, I would, everybody would do that. Um, but you know, it's, it's a bit too good to be true in a sense. Um, and, and so that's why I've really tried to focus this series on explaining how you can create trading algorithms of your own, you know, like with the back testing platform and um, kind of going through the details of the API, um, how to gather data you need. Um, I think the, the API really gives you all the tools and, you know, hopefully knowing how to use them, you, you can really do some research on your own, look into all kinds of different indicators, maybe machine learning in there like we looked at in part four. And, and you know, through that research of your own, you have your algorithm that you've back tested that works and you're the only one trading on it. So it's, it's a little bit like sharing a pie in a way. If you're sharing a pie with thousands of people, you're gonna get a very small slice of that pie. So um, yeah, you, you really need this property of uniqueness with any trading algorithm. Um, it's why we focused on only Bollinger Bands. It's a simple algorithm, um, but I think it gave you the tools necessary to actually you know, learn how to use the API and develop that, that strategy of your own. So I wanted to touch on that. Um, you know, I, it's not that I, I don't want to post a better trading strategy. It's just simply that, you know, people will be disappointed if they actually run it, um, just because they'll be running it alongside potentially hundreds of other people. Um, so that's kind of the first thing I want to touch on here. A couple of other things I did see one comment regarding um, the way we were getting precision in our live trading uh, bot here. So I'm gonna go back to this code that we wrote um, in the last part of the series here. This was when we were implementing the Bollinger Band strategy live on the API. Um, and if you remember, if you haven't seen that video, by the way, this um, maybe go back and watch that one. Or just wanted to clear this up if you did have this issue anyway. Um, but if you remember, we were getting precision for each of our buys here with this code basically asking the API, how many decimal places can we supply that will, you know, um, if I wanna buy X amount of Bitcoin, how many decimal places can I give to the API to tell it how much I want, right? You can't give it a string of 15 digits. Um, it just won't allow that. It needs um, between like, depending on the cryptocurrency, like three to 10 decimal places. Um, and basically what I wanted to cover here was a workaround to this. I think this code doesn't work in all cases for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it was a misunderstanding of mine of how the exchange works or, or per perhaps a bug in the exchange even. But anyway, this basically we were asking to get info about the specific symbol that we want to buy. Um, and we were asking for this quote precision parameter. And this, you know, when I ran the code the first time, this actually worked for me, but I have run into this issue as well. And I think this for whatever reason doesn't work all the time. So if anyone um, does understand the API better than me and wants to leave a comment explaining why this doesn't work all the time here, you know, feel free to do so. Um, basically, I'm just going to supply a quick workaround for that. So um, I have this, this alternate alternative get precision function that you can use instead. Basically, we supply a price and a desired buy amount. And instead of asking the exchange what precision we should supply, we're just going to calculate it ourselves. Um, we want to get within we'll say 50 cents of our desired buy amount. And once we're within 50 cents, you know, that's good enough. That's the amount of decimal places we'll use. So very simply, we're just iterating towards higher and higher precision. Once we're satisfied with the, with the amount we got back, then we'll break out and return that amount of precision here. So for example, um, let's just use a desired, uh, here, desired amount US dollars of Let's say $1,500. So this is the amount we want to buy or sell. And then we'll say the price, let's just use Bitcoin as an example. Um, what is the price right now? So these are parameters you would pass to the function, but this just to kind of exemplify this. So we'll just use this price. So let's say we want to buy $1,500 worth of Bitcoin at $49,261.56. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to calculate at each level of precision and check whether that amount, or that calculated amount is within 50 cents of our desired amount. 
So to show or to exemplify this here, let's just print first hour. Um, it's a calculated amount, which is so. What we're doing is we're converting our desired amount to U.S. dollars by dividing by the price, and then we're rounding it with that precision here. So we're iterating towards higher precision. Um, yeah, so this should be inside the for loop. So let's take that conversion. And so this is our calculated amount. Um, actually, we've got, a multi we've got to multiply back by the price to convert it to, so we're, we're converting it to US dollars, rounding it, and then multiplying it by the price again to convert it back to the actual amount of cryptocurrency we're buying or selling. Um, and then the difference will also will also print here, which is this whole thing. So the absolute value of you know the calculated amount minus the desired amount. So let's print that as well. Um, I hope people can see this. Let's zoom in. So our difference is then. This calculation here, and we are checking if this difference is less than 50 cents, right? And if so, then we're going to return the precision at that point. So let's run this function here. I'm going to have to import numpy, and then we'll just say precision equals get precision. for our desired amount, well, actually our price first, and our desired amount. Um, let's print just a new line here to clean this up. Um, and so you can see, and then let's also print our, our precision here. So I, that's our precision. So you can see here, at a precision of one or one decimal place. Our calculated amount is zero, I imagine, because our our you know the amount we actually would want to buy or our desired amount is is like 0 0.02 something like that, or you know starts with a point zero. So if you round it to only one decimal place, you're just going to get zero. Obviously, this is not enough decimals to fulfill the order. So then we move on to two decimal places. Calculated amount is then 1477. The difference is $22, getting closer, but still not enough. Same with um, at three decimal places. We get to four, we're getting even closer, where the difference is $2. So you can see we're, we're at 1497, this is really close. Would be satisfactory in most cases. Let's just get one more decimal place here, and you can see we're at 1500.01. So at this point, I think we're, we're okay with being within one cent of our desired amount um, in terms of US dollars. Um, so then we can we can use this precision to fill the order. So our precision in this case is five, and so this would basically just slot in for for this precision function here. Um, so you'd basically create your list of precisions with, or you maybe just ask for it live, or calculate it live as you make the order. Um, and instead of passing this precision here, we can you know pass the output of that function. So that's just kind of a, a simple workaround that you can implement if you were having troubles with that in you know in the last video that is something somebody commented on and um, you know pointed out to me that was not working properly <clears throat> um, and we're kind of you know jumping around in a lot of different areas here but one last thing I wanted to cover um, to wrap up this series is just sort of a profit a way to visualize your profits and losses maybe you know from the last video it was a while ago now you've been you've developed a trading bot and you've been running it over the past month or so and you want to be able to visualize, you know, how has it been doing? Obviously, you can see the balance changing in your account, but maybe you want a way to kind of better break down the buys and sells um, and, and your profits and losses over time. Um, so I have written up a function here. I'm not going to go through the specifics of how it works just because I think, you know, there's no point in explaining plotting functions. Not super interesting, but 
Um, we can kind of talk through it and then I'll post this code on GitHub if you'd like to recycle it for your own use. Um, but basically what we're doing here is we're going to use Plotly and we are going to specify our list of symbols that, that we've been trading on or you know you can make this list as long as you want. Um, just to this is just so we know what we're going to grab um, from the API. We are then going to use this get all orders function. So this is actually your personal orders, nothing to do with you know what's live on the exchange. This is for you personally. What orders have you made over the past time? Um, actually all orders. And then we're gonna filter that down to a specific time period. So we do that here. And I specified here just the last 45 days. Um, and I did actually have an algorithm running so we can look at the results of that as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna explain all the code here, but just very simply where basically just grabbing that data from the exchange and, and transforming it in a way that we can actually plot this. Um, you can you know, look further into this code on GitHub if, if you're interested. But we're just appending to this list of trades. We're ha we have the date time of the trade, the symbol that we bought or sold, and then the sell price divided by the buy price. That is your profit or loss percentage. Um, so if, if you made a little bit of money, that will be like 1.01. .01, that'd be a 1% profit or you know, 0.99 if it was a 1% loss your total profit in terms of US dollars here, so subtracting how much you sold minus how much you bought. If, um, you, know, if you bought $1,010, and or if you sold $1,010 and you bought $1,000, you know you made $10, $10 on that trade. So we're gonna track that as well. Um, and then basically we are just, you know, aggregating that information into a, into a format that um, Plotly can accept to plot here, and I'll kind of show you the results of, of how that looks. So this first plot, what we have is just a bar plot of the different symbols. I, this is you know my personal trades, but this would be the symbols you bought and sold over the past 45 days in this case. Um, and you see ultimately this yielded a profit of $99. And then kind of uh, another way to visualize this would be in terms of a, a line plot here. So this is just tracking your profit loss over time. So you can see we started out with a couple profitable trades, kind of dipped down into the negative for a bit here, and then ultimately came back up over the course of November um, to results in that $99 profit. Um, yeah, I think, as I said, I will, I would like to revisit this. There was one suggestion in the comments talking about using um, tweets or other social media data to predict the movement of a cryptocurrency. Not sure if that would work, but I'd definitely love to explore that. I think I'll probably make a video about that in the future. Uh, basically about the sentiment or the volume of tweets about a certain cryptocurrency. For example, if people are tweeting positive things about Bitcoin one day, you might expect it to go up the next, you know, on the next day. Um, so definitely might look into that in the future. Um, but I think for now, I'm going to move on to more machine learning kind of stuff uh, on the channel here. So I've been working on a series that will start coming out. Um, yeah, really focusing more on the machine learning aspect of things. So if you have any other ideas you'd like me to explore relating to cryptocurrency trading, any algorithm in mind, I'd love to hear your ideas. I think it's always cool to look into some alternative things that I haven't thought of yet and just kind of play around with backtesting and maybe do some analytics on different types of strategies. I thought that, you know, social media sentiment one was a pretty interesting idea. And I feel like there's, there's probably a lot more ideas out there that maybe, you know, if you, you're exploring yourself or you'd like to see me kind of dig into, I'd love to try out some of those things. Um, but thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.